So do you still think net zero by 2050 is not the Australian way, or do you now agree with the Prime Minister that it, it would be preferable to reach that target? Whatever we do, we'll get there through technology, not taxes, David. Look, I'm sorry, but I just can't let this go through to the keeper anymore. Every time the LNP is questioned about its emission strategy, it regurgitates the same hackneyed talking point. But Australia's approach will be technology driven, uh, not taxes driven. The deployment of technology, not taxes. Stop right there. I know bullshit when I hear it, and this is the top shelf stuff. This is the kind that you'd be served in a three hat bullshit restaurant. Now just think about this for a minute. In a media release from September last year, Angus Taylor committed to spending $18 billion on low emissions technologies over the next 10 years. A further commitment of $2 billion has been made to the LNP's Emissions Reduction Fund. This is an initiative that data from the Clean Energy Regulator shows is completely ineffectual. Contracted abatement has been flatlining since 2018. If it wasn't for its greenwashing value, the LNP would have declared it dead, buried and cremated back then. But hey, never let the truth stand in the way of standing in the way of real action on climate change, huh? And then there is Malcolm's beloved Snowy Hydro 2.0. Remember it was going to cost just $2 billion? Well now Scotty is picking up the tab for the construction at $5.1 billion. And that doesn't include the cost of building out the transmission infrastructure. Now colour me a neoliberal, but doesn't all this money have to come from somewhere? And I'm guessing it won't be found down the back of the LNP's party room couch. This is just a wild hunch, but I think it could be coming from our taxes. There's no technology versus taxes here. It's just taxes. See, once you decide to invest in emissions reduction, there's really only one choice. Do we tax our citizens or do we tax the corporations that are generating the emissions? The Labor Party chose the latter and the LNP have chosen the former. Of course, it can be argued that in the end, it's all slated back to the punters since the corporations will simply pass the tax through in the form of higher prices. Makes you laugh, doesn't it? When you think back over the last 13 years, how many prime ministers have died in ditches over such a moot point? Ah, the futility of war. Anyway, back to technology versus taxes. Now, you can't blame anyone with a nickname like Scotty from marketing for giving this a red-hot crack. Maybe the average taxpayer is too stupid or just too disengaged to notice they're being hoodwinked. But where's the media in all of this? Don't get me wrong, I like Spearsy and think he does a pretty good job of holding our polly's feet to the flame. I could probably say the same about most of Australia's fourth estate. But really, why is it that not one journalist in Australia has challenged this slogan? Whatever we do, we'll get there through technology, not taxes, David. Call me a hair trigger, but doesn't this set off their bullshit detector like it does mine? Just once, couldn't we have some rookie point out the nonsense in this statement? Couldn't he just stop the politician mid-sentence and ask, hmm, wait a minute, isn't the ERF funded by taxes? Then maybe we could have our own Jonathan Swan, Donald Trump moment in Australia. Take a look. Right here. Here's case death. Oh, you're doing death as a proportion of cases. I'm talking about death as a proportion of population. You can't do that. Look, let's be fair dinkum here. There's no free ride on the train to lower carbon emissions. There's no perpetual motion machine that'll cost nothing and deliver net zero emissions. Clean coal, like cold fusion, is about as bankable as a politician's promise in an election year. And there's no magic pudding from which you can take money and it magically replenishes. In the end, there's a price to be paid for remediating the climate that we have screwed up over the last hundred years. And rest assured, we will all be paying for it. This is as it should be, since every human being has made some contribution to the increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. If you've driven a car, switched on a light, turned on an air conditioner in the last hundred years, then you've made a contribution. So there are only two questions that matter. Which initiative will give us the greatest emission reduction for the least cost? And secondly, is the cost being fairly distributed according to who is most responsible for creating the pollution? Ponder this for a little while and the answer to the question who to tax should become obvious. 
Thanks for watching.